Hello, and welcome to the history of the Ghostbusters. Today's episode, we're going to be covering Louis Tully. And here we go. Louis Tully is an accountant who lived down the hall from Dana Barrett in an apartment building on Central Park West. Five years later, he became the Ghostbusters accountant. In 1984, Louis Tully was a resident of the Shandor building at 55 Central Park West and lived on the 22nd floor. Lewis occupied 2202. He had unreciprocated romantic feelings for Dana Barrett and clumsily bursted out of his apartment whenever she was in the hallway. He was mysteriously locked out of his apartment numerous times, unaware of the supernatural history of the building. One night, Lewis was hosting a party in the honor of his fourth anniversary as an accountant. At the time, the terror dogs, Vince Clortho and Zool, had escaped from their statues and began to search for host bodies. Vince found its way into Lewis's bedroom. Vince disrupted the party, smashing through the closet door, terrifying the guests, and chased Lewis until it cornered him in Central Park outside the tavern on the green. Lewis fainted when Vince roared at him, after which the terror dog possessed him. Lewis, now inhabited by Vince Clortho, ran around Central Park harassing random people in search of Zool, the gatekeeper. He bumped into a coachman who gave him a hard time for talking to his horse. The possessed Lewis growled at him, his eyes flared a purplish red. He ran off rambling incoherently about the coming of Gozer. He was later picked up by the cops who, in turn, dropped him off at the firehouse. Egon Spangler took some PKE readings and took custody of him. Egon scanned Lewis's brainwaves and saw an image of the demonic terror dog's head on the screen. Lewis introduced himself as Vince Clortho and explained his purpose to Egon Spangler and Janine Melnitz. Following Mr. Peck's visit and the resulting explosion, Lewis escaped, staggering around the mists of chaos in New York City in search of Zool, who had possessed Dana Barrett. Until finally finding the gatekeeper in Dana's demolished apartment, they introduced each other as the key master and the gatekeeper, and proceeded to meet at the center of Dana's ravaged apartment in a passionate embrace. Lewis and Dana later consummated their mnemonic union atop a large stone tablet in front of the Temple of Gozer later transforming back into their natural terror dog forms. After the Ghostbusters blasted Gozer, Lewis was released from his possession as the Key Master and returned to normal. Egon, Ray Stance, and Winston Zetamor helped Lewis get out of the charred remains of Vince. Ghostbusters 2 At some point between 1984 and 1989, Lewis earned a law degree at night school and explained his specialties as a tax attorney. On occasion, he worked on probate. In late 1989, at Peter's insistence, Lewis reluctantly became the defense counsel for the Ghostbusters, despite only specializing as a lawyer for cases of taxation. He won the case. Lewis's victory was indirect, as the Scolari brothers appeared in the courtroom, causing everyone to run for their lives as they captured Lewis's rival attorney. After the Scolari brothers flew outside with the prosecutor, Judge Wexler wailed. The Ghostbusters informed him he would be next. He begged for them to do something and help him, but Ray deferred him to Lewis. Lewis pointed out that the Ghostbusters were still under a restrangement order, preventing them from using their equipment. Wexler caved and rescinded all charges against them and dropped the case. Lewis cheered over winning the case. He walked out with the Ghostbusters and held up the trap. After the Ghostbusters went back into business, Lewis was part of their staff as personal accountant and tax attorney, even going as far as to appear in one of their TV ads. At one point, when working in the Ghostbusters firehouse, Lewis remarked that he smelled something pungent and then caught Slimer eating his lunch. This caused Slimer and Lewis to flee in opposite directions. During the week of New Year's Eve, Lewis finally snuck up the courage to ask Janine out on a date. Janine was busy with babysitting Oscar, but asked if he would want to come along. While babysitting with Janine at Peter's apartment, the two became closer and made out on the couch. Oscar was kidnapped. After Dana left to go to the museum, Lewis learned that the Ghostbusters had been wrongly committed to Parkview Psychiatric Hospital. He went there and after they were released, briefing them on the surge of paranormal activity as they quickly suited up and walked out. He returned to the firehouse with Janine's help suited up in one of Egon's uniforms and then left by foot with the proton pack. Underestimating the weight of the equipment, Lewis became quickly tired. He was saved by the timely arrival of a city bus that Slimer had commandeered, patching up their incident earlier. Shortly upon his arrival at the museum, Lewis starts blasting the slime shell covering it as Vigo became weakened from the reveler singing. Upon the defeat of Vigo, 
the slime shield disappeared, and the crowd hailed Lewis as a hero, even though he had little to do with the situation. He proudly proclaimed he was a Ghostbuster. Hey, thank you for watching the history of the Ghostbusters. Special thanks to the Ghostbuster Wiki and all contributors for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you have, thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.